I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on a couple things. So the items uh, on the lower right with the green light, those are MD-10C uh, motor controllers and they're rated, I believe they're rated for 30 amps. Uh, I'm way under that threshold. They're a little bit expensive. You could probably do what uh, a little cheaper if you wanted to. Uh, the reason I did that is I had no clue how many amps this was gonna wind up drawing. Uh, so I thought, anyway, I thought I'd point out a couple times. Um, on them, so basically what you're doing is you have voltage in, they're on the blocks on the left hand side and then you have voltage to the motor and then on the right hand side what you have is a controller so you'll take uh, there's a positive and a ground and then a control wire so that only what that winds up doing is you really only need with the way I have uh, the voltage blocks over here you only need to take up one space on the Raspberry Pi so you only need one GPIO pin and then since you're running off the rest it's fine it also makes it to where you don't have, um, in your code, you only need to do a forward reverse and then one for speed. So that's kind of nice, uh, eliminates a little bit on the code side as well. And so the, a couple things. So I wanted to point out on, on these, uh, on these HCSR04, the optical sensors. So number one, they are just nuts. They bounce all over the place and they're terrible. So I've wound up limiting what they can do so if if for example you'll see sometimes it doesn't register which i get it but what because they bounce around so much so they might bounce from 2000 centimeters down to say 15 and so the thing goes nuts so basically what i've done is i said anytime that it jumps from one side to another and it's more than a hundred centimeters that it's registering don't just ignore it don't don't even mess with it just wait for the next signal so sometimes that bites me in the butt uh, it also makes it a little slow uh, on startup to start registering and then it also makes it a little bit slow sometimes when it's out there it gets a little confused that said one nice thing about this uh it, the uh, nia 219 for checking voltage and amperage so I put into my code that once it detects too much amperage, so once it goes above like 2.5 amps, because I know with all three motors running, I'm running roughly about 1.2 amps. So anytime it goes above 2.5 amps, go ahead, stop, meaning we've run into something, there's a problem, back up, turn around, and keep going. So for example, the uh, two drive motors, I'm finding that uh, just running without any load, they're running about 0.25 amps. Uh, running normally they're running just a slightly above that so as long as even out in the grass they're not running much above that then the cutting blade uh, I, I don't know exactly why it's a much larger motor perhaps that's it it's running around 3,000 rpm and it's pulling between 0.5 and 0.65 amps with no load um, so anyway that uh, that INA back on that INA 219 it it has a max amperage, and I guess this is before it hurts it, I don't know. I might wind up having to change that eventually, but it'll run up to 3.2 amps, I believe is the max on it. So I might wind up having to run like an ACS 712, which is another sensor, but you have to run, I don't think it's, it's not SPI compatible. So you have to run, a, if I remember right, it's like a MCP 3008. I believe that's a ADC with SPI. So you can run those together. Now they need, it needs five volts, whereas this uh, INA 219 only needs 3.3 volts. So because it needs five volts, you know, you gotta put resistors in there. So I'd have to build a little control board, et cetera. But otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's, uh, I'm pretty well getting close to, I, I'm already field testing it, but, but so the, the only thing I'm lacking, the only, there's a couple items that I'm lacking. Number one, um, I need an infrared, I, I need to make a base station that allows it to connect up to about, charge this battery. And when I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little infrared LED on that charging station. And the idea behind that LED, uh, it's an infrared LED, number one, it's 45 cents. You can pick them up anywhere, so I'll probably buy a half dozen. And then um, 
also when it comes to that um then the little infrared receiver i'll put that on the front of this mower so basically since the infrared led has a has a angle spread of about 20 degrees so then i'll just start looking for it once once the uh, ina 219 starts telling me hey you're below like 12.1 or 12.2 volts start looking for that infrared signal and then I may tie that back into GPS, so like go put it back, try and go back to an area. And GPS is kind of nice because you can use that little, you can use a dongle that's a, a plug-in and it just plugs into the USB. Uh, it, here's, here's what, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's the GPS, GPS itself and then the plug-in. So you can basically put it back in a location that's pretty darn close to where it is. I can start looking for the infrared, and then once it once it detects it, just follow it back. You know, once you're outside, when you lose it, turn back right, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not, not that big a deal on the code side. But uh, otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much it. Compared to last time, I did, uh, I took it from being a front wheel drive to being a rear wheel drive. And I went ahead and put two front drive wheels, or two, not drive wheels, but uh, two wheels on the front, just to kind of help it stay level. And I, I don't remember if I told you this or not, so if I did, sorry. But uh, the way I came up with that is I did a paint can test. I just took a full can of paint, which I know is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 pounds. I threw it down on the floor, and I pushed against it, and I pulled against it and pushing it would move it and pulling it uh it would not so that's why i turned this into a push mower ha ah. but anyway so that's what i did it just seemed to work much more effectively and i don't know if that's based on center of the center of mass I, you got me so i didn't really check that out that much but uh otherwise that's it for today